I spoke to someone earlier today and they said, you know, are you going uh, to start your talk with a joke? I said, well, I'm going to start the talk with uh, a portrait of myself when I was five years old. I'll say, I don't know if that's the same thing, but uh, it's always good for a laugh. Uh, this is me. Uh, this is me. I think, actually, I might have been a touch younger. I think I was four. And uh, you may, uh, let me just get that head till. I think that's where it's all at. Um, this is me. This is uh, one of my dreams. And uh, when I was this age, I said, I want to be an artist. And uh, the picture next to that is my mum, um, who's an amazing woman, and a woman that I look up to and that I love. And, uh, you know, from a young age, I had this, something resonated within me that said, I want to be an artist. You know, creativity is part of who I am, part of who we are. And how can I actually incorporate that? How can I have that integrated into the rest of my life? But what I want to share with you today uh, is that we're all artists. We're all artists. And we're going to take a little journey and uh, we're going to begin to expand on what that means. Expand on what that means for you as an individual, but also as a collective, as a community. How do we actually be artists as, as Bunbury, you know, as Greater Bunbury, you know, beyond you know, our immediate surrounds? How do we be an artist in the lives of uh, those around us as well. And so I like, to, I like to reflect on where I've been. I like to reflect on what it is to be a child because in a fast-paced world, in a fast-paced life, you know, we can be so consumed with just getting on with the next thing. Next thing, next thing, you know, next schedule, next Christmas, next year. And uh, we don't often take time to reflect. And so I like to think about what it is to be a child because when I was a child, I said I wanted to be an artist. Um, but what I realised was that I wasn't an artist by practice, I was actually an artist by design. And that we are created to create. We are created to be creative. And so that is the foundation. Unfortunately, when I speak to most people, they say, oh, mate, that's brilliant, you know, you're an artist. Mate, I do not have a creative bone in my body. I'm like, well, that's actually not possible. By design, that is not possible. And yet what we've done is elevated the idea of being an artist to actually mean creative perfection. And yet to be an artist is actually about creative expression. Hence, we're all artists. So let's take a small trip down um, geography lane. Um, if you don't know where we are on this beautiful planet, um, I mean, there's obviously some major issues right there, but um, for those of you who don't know where we are, um, we are in the southwest pocket, Western Australia. Uh, this is where I grew up, and uh, I grew up in Bunbury. I love calling this place home. Uh, my wife and I have returned here uh, just last year, and uh, it's great to be back. It's great to be back uh, close to the ocean. It's great to uh, be around friends, family, fresh faces. Uh, more specific, we're actually 200 kilometres, approximate, south, 200 kilometres south of one of the most, if not the most remote city in the world. So the reason I want to point that out is that I found when I was growing up was that because we were so removed, I guess, um, I felt the freedom to express. I felt the freedom, I guess, not necessarily to compare myself with other people, other cities, what other, you know, creatives were doing. I just thought, you know what, life is predominantly about surfing, eating and sleeping. Um, things do change. Um, yeah, things change. So, anyway, like I said, bit of geography. But as I've grown up and I've continued to practice in different mediums and uh, as what was shared earlier, being an illustrator, and I do a range of things from uh, calligraphy, uh, which is always a good laugh when I'm filling out documents when people say, oh, you write like a girl. And I'm like, oh, thanks. That's, uh, you know, I'm a guy, right? Okay, anyway, so um, obviously hand lettering is something uh, that has maybe been lost a little bit, but, you know, creative practice in, in what I do and the passion um, is to create in various mediums. And I had a momentum, and, and that momentum, you know, came to a halt when I was uh, in my early 20s and a uh, broken relationship, um, and life just stopped. 
You know, you can have momentum through life at times and feel like, you know, nearly to the point that you kind of feel untouchable, you know, that everything is possible. And yet there's moments in which you feel like nothing is possible. And, uh, you know, can it get better, I guess is the question that you ask yourself. And I began to draw and I began to create. And I drew this character and this character stuck with me. And it's called Coming Apart. And the idea, and I guess the reflection of what was happening in my own life was, you know, what does it look like both to feel like you're coming apart at the seams? And it's a shared experience that we can all agree on on various levels throughout our life. And yet, what does it feel like to be sewn back up again? And so I began to draw. And this coming apart illustration is about this idea of being sewn back up again. And I believe healing is not just a concept, but it can actually be... Uh, an experienced reality. But uh, I would draw. This is a photo of me in Canada where uh, my beautiful wife and I were living uh, not too long ago. And uh, it was, I guess, going back, it was a time of integrating back into society. And I was struck with this revelation of what if we could take art from a studio and what if we could take it to people? So rather than just saying, all right, everybody, come to me, come to my gallery, come to my studio, look at what I'm doing. Uh, It becomes very self-focused. But I thought, you know, what about the idea of actually bringing art to people? My wife and I travelled down to Virginia to see some very close friends of ours, Zach and Greta. And uh, as we're driving along uh, in Richmond, we come across these beautiful murals, part of the Richmond Mural Project. Uh, And this is me photographed with two of uh, my, I guess, most favourite artists, uh, Roa, who's from Belgium, and Ariz, who's from Spain. And I was blown away. But what took me, I guess, by surprise a little bit was the simple fact that people were stopping and interacting with the artwork. And they were stopping and talking to each other. And in a fast-paced world, we were actually taking time to interact. It wasn't necessarily that everyone loved the artwork, but they were talking. And I was thought... That's actually quite unique. You know, that's quite a beautiful thing to see people interacting with artwork that was on the street. So I thought, I reckon I could bring this back to Bunbury. I think I could actually give this a crack in my hometown. So I started contacting a few artists and I said, you know, what would you think about painting some murals in Bunbury? I kind of got this idea going and originally it was just about getting a few mates together and, and uh, paint a few walls and then that was, uh, that was about it. It was quite simple. And then more and more people said, mate, we want to be a part of that. I wouldn't mind uh, sponsoring that. I said to my wife, I was like, oh, I guess we should probably like make this a festival or something. And, uh, and so this momentum began to grow. And people not only desired something that was you know, aesthetically pleasing, but what I came to know was that what people desired more was community. People desired interaction. People desired conversation. People actually wanted to be a part of their neighbour's life Uh, but they were usually too scared to knock on the door. And so art became a catalyst. Art became a bridge. Street art became something that actually bridged that conversation. People started talking about colours, reminding them of something from their childhood. You know, imagery began to reflect something from their journey, from their story, and stories began uh, to be shared. I thought, "This this is an amazing thing. So we ran this festival called Rediscover back in January in Bunbury within the CBD to activate feet on the street to support businesses, but also to support artists. And to say that art is not just something that has to exist inside a little room, inside a closet, but art can be something that is an extension of who you are. It can actually uh, give imagery and actually uh, convey a story where words are sometimes not enough. The poverty of the English language is sometimes exactly that. It falls short of what we want to convey. And so we gathered a group of artists, Jodie Knowles, Anya Brock, Tim Howe, Kyle Hughes Hodges. I jumped in there. Um, And then also uh, an artist by the name of Stormy Mills. And this was an artist that I had looked up to for a number of years. And uh, when he confirmed, as with all the other artists, there was a sense of excitement. But what we did was took a blank wall, a blank canvas, if you will, and we transformed that. We actually began to engage people. I remember looking at this wall my whole life growing up as I'd cruise into town, and I'd often thought, mate, it'd be brilliant to see a big piece of art on that. So when the owner came forward and said, you know what, I'll put some coin in, I'll actually allow you to paint it, I thought, mate, this is brilliant. 
You know, this is a little childhood dream coming together. So Stormy began to paint. People began to engage with this artwork. And it wasn't necessarily, once again, the objective was not that everyone would love it. Because if everyone loved it, that means everyone loves the same thing. And if everyone loves the same thing, it kind of becomes a little bit boring. There was diversity, but there was conversation. There was interaction. And as Stormy created this piece, what began to unfold in the uh, following weeks is that it began to inspire other artists. As a poet... Uh, Miss Ashbury uh, in Bunbury, who ended up writing a poem in response to Stormy's piece. And this poem actually ended up winning the Shoreline's uh, Poet uh, Festival competition. And so it was a beautiful thing to witness that one medium could then inspire another. And so it began to take on a life of its own. And this thing was kind of unfolding um, organically, um, sometimes stressfully which, uh, that's another TED Talk. And uh, many stories uh, that happen behind the scenes, I guess with a lot of projects that you, you don't really predict, and yet you just, I think you just roll with the punches. You keep your eye on the goal, where you're going, what's happening, and we designed a map to actually hand out to people, and we said, hey, come along, engage with these murals that we've created, here's a map, begin to do the tour. And people started to do the tour. I was like, oh, this is brilliant. You know, kids are getting photos in front of the murals, mums are out, dads are out, families are out, neighbours are beginning to interact, where sometimes people were too scared to knock on the door. Art became a bridge for that to take place, and it was a beautiful thing. So people took this map, and they walked around, and on a pretty, pretty warm Saturday evening, uh, we gathered, about 100 of us, a bit over 100 of us, and we said, look, let's hit the street, Let's do this tour. So the artist shared, and as you can see here on the screen, Anya Brock, uh, who created a piece down on Stephen Street. And uh, we just jammed into these alleyways, over 100 of us, and uh, it was kind of this Pied Piper you know, type of uh, effect. And we're walking around the streets, and people are interacting, people who didn't know each other, people who, who did but hadn't seen each other for years, and there was this real buzz. People who were just out about in Bunbury just started to jump on board as we're walking around, saying, oh, you know, what's going on here? You know, I'll be a part of this. So they just jumped on, and there's 100 of us walking around, and if you see 100 people walking around in Bunbury on a Saturday evening, <laughs> if anyone, uh, for those who are from Bunbury, it's a very rare thing. Um, actually, 100 people on any afternoon is quite a rare thing. But, um, <laughs> but it was a beautiful interaction. There was this thing growing called community. Now, not just community by concept, because it's a word that we throw around pretty loosely these days, but community in the sense of genuine interaction, a sense of vulnerability, a sense of um, gathering alongside each other and admitting that doing it together is better than doing it alone. So when I say the word community, I want to refer to that dependence on each other. So it was an amazing thing. Following that, I had the opportunity to... Uh, do workshops with young people. Um, I had the privilege of talking to an amazing women's club, um, amazing retired women uh, in Bunbury, and they invited me along. And, oh, we want to hear about the street art, and we're chatting away and laughing. And um, it was really, I don't have uh, on my uh, natural family side, my, my grandparents have, have passed away, and it was kind of felt like this like adoption session. It was like, you know, 50 grandmas. It was like, ah. Oh, this is brilliant. There was like homemade cookies. Anyway, so um, I mean, it was a brilliant experience. But at the end of that, they're like, all right, ladies, let's get together. We're doing the tour. And I was like, that's what I'm talking about. You know, I was like, this is great. This is what it's about. It's saying that we want to interact. Sometimes we just don't know how. We want community. Sometimes we don't know where to start. And so it's been a real privilege, privilege to see the spin-off of this project uh, on a number of different levels. And so those, I guess, from the original dream, things begin to unfold and give new life and actually begin to grow, which is a beautiful thing. And so, you know, where to from here? I mean, you can't just stop with uh, one festival. So you need to keep moving. And so as we continue to grow, coming up in January, we're going to run this festival again. Uh, we've got 12 artists coming. We're going to paint more murals. We've got interactive opportunities for people to be a part of Rediscover. And so I want to say thank you for those who have been involved up to this point. I want to encourage those 
who haven't, to come along. Come check it out. January 15th to the 18th. Oh, 14th to the 17th. 15th to the 18th was this year. Let's jump forward a year. 14th to the 17th. Come along on the streets. Come and enjoy, uh, you know, what community looks like. Um, I guess I'd like to close this time and just really give thanks. You know, I want to give thanks. Uh, I wouldn't be standing here if the Lord hadn't made me and put air in my lungs. And uh, he is the ultimate creator and we're made in his image. Hence, we're creative. Hence, we're all artists. To my wife, um, I love you dearly. And uh, you're my best friend. You continue to show me, uh, you know, what it is to be creative. And so um, I wouldn't be standing here without you in my life. And uh, it's easy just to look at things that we do. And yet we rarely give credit to those who got us there. And so thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for being here. And uh, enjoy the rest of the afternoon.